the decade following the Civil War, people of all creeds and colors were part of the West. The following is a story about two of those people. Place your bets. We ought to get some sleep if we're leaving early. I don't want to sleep. Yeah, and I don't want to leave early. Or what do you want to do? I don't know. Just something different. Anything. This is ridiculous. We go out hunting bounty so we can get enough money to go out and hunt bounty. Like a couple of mules pulling a millstone. You wouldn't talk like that if you was ever a mule. Like I almost was. Yeah, well, that's you, not me. I'm not black. Is that all you got to be proud of? Seven, you lose. Next shooter. Just a minute. You weren't so anxious to leave when I was winning. You were better looking when you were winning. Now you go on home. Oh, come on, honey. Now, quit that, Davy. Look, I just want to have a little fun for my money, Sure, sure now get. You all right, Polly? Hey, yes. It's like you don't want much more than a mule, neither. Ah! Word. No, I won't hurt you. Unless I have to. Now, I need some help. And I'm willing to pay. Pay big, you understand? Uh. Oh, oh, Never mind that. Yeah. I figure a little girly like you, you could use a thousand dollars. Now, what do you say? A thousand? In cash. I need some help to get out of town and across the next border. Well, uh, maybe I could get you a buckboard. No, uh, come here. You know Earl Corey? Well, he's in there, sitting next to that, sitting alongside that black man. Now, you, you go on back in there. And you, you get Corey alone. And you tell him that Stan Sutton's I'm willing to pay him ten times what I owe him. Sutton? Sutton? Are you the Sutton that robbed the Tombstone Bank last week for $14,000? At least that proves I got money to pay you, don't I? But, but why bother with that fella? I mean, uh, you got all that money and you're hurt and he might play you mean. Money ain't in my pocket. But I'm the only one who knows where it is, you understand? Wouldn't be in this fix if I'd have just stayed put. I had a whole town to myself was just doing fine. Now I need a man can use a horse and a gun. You can do like I say. Yes, yes, of course. All right. But what if after I tell him, it goes for the sheriff instead? Well, now, I'll be right here watching the both of you. And the first one goes for the sheriff is dead. <laughs> In case you're interested. How'd you know my name? I was interested. Barkey, three whiskeys. <laughs> three? I really don't think we could talk in front of your darkie. Well, I don't think he'd tell on us, would you, boy? 
No, sir, master. And I don't know how anybody would care if I did. Didn't you ever learn better not to sass white folks? Yes, ma'am. I learned that for a long time. But I wouldn't say that was better. Well, I don't know about the lady, but I drink to your health. Well, I do know about her. It's people like you I wonder about sometimes. Good night, miss. No, thank you. Whiskey makes me lazy. You wouldn't like that. No? What would I like? Well, you're big and strong and good looking for fair. But that's not why I'm here. Oh, what a shame. A friend of yours sent me. Stan Sutton. Sutton? He's no friend of mine and never was. Thought he was on the run. He stopped close by with a hurt shoulder and $14,000 in cash. Why don't you tell the sheriff? Why, is there a reward on it? <laughs> well, it's not exactly what I meant. Stan says he owes you money. Yeah, you might say that. He stole my horse and saddle about three years back. Well, he's willing to pay you back ten times over if you get him across the border. Why would that make you happy? Well, I'd take you to be a sporting gentleman who might be grateful. Actually, he's been shot. Now, bad as he is, you could probably ask him for half of the $14,000 and he'd have to make a deal with you. Well, if he's in such bad shape, why don't you just hit him over the head and take it all? No, darling, he's not that stupid, really. He's got the money hid someplace and you got to find out where. <laughs> you know, that's what I like about you. You don't care who you help, as long as it's yourself. One thing, I've never been called as a hypocrite. Well, I guess there's always got to be one thing. How come you trust me? How do you know I won't just take that money and forget all about you? Mm-mm, honey, I tell people. Uh, Polly, look, I'm not going to play any games with you. I don't know where Stan is, and you're not going to tell me. So let's just leave it that way, huh? You're teasing. You don't want the money? Not over somebody's dead body, honey. Seven, you lose. Not even yours. I should have been more romantic. That would have taken a little longer and been more fun. <laughs> But we'd still end up right where we are now. Good night, pretty Polly. Don't! What the hell is going on here? How long you known Stan Sutton? He stole my horse and saddle from me three years back. That's how well I know Sutton. Well, you ain't surprised to hear his name, are you? <laughs> Is that what you woke me up for, a surprise? Well, thanks, and good night. Hey. Come in here, you. Oh, you rode in with him. What do you know about his coming here to meet Sutton? Who's Sutton? What they looking for? All right, Corey, where's the money? What money? The money Sutton stole from the tombstone bank. Where's he hid it? <laughs> How should I know? What's he want to see you about then? He wants to see me? Stop asking and start answering. I picked him up this morning. He won't say nothing. He don't even want no lawyer. All he wants is to talk to you. Now, why is that? First the surprise and now question game. I give up, Sheriff. Why? Corey, he killed a tombstone deputy for that money. Now, if you ain't helping us, you're helping him. You understand? It's beginning to get through to me, yeah. All right, I'll go talk to him. No law says I have to allow that. Fine. Good night. 
get up out of there and get dressed. <sighs> Sheriff, did anyone ever tell you that you got a great gift for contradiction? Sheriff, I got that right. You got about three minutes is what you got. Uh, you think he tried to listen? I don't give a bag of beans if he does. Why'd you do it, Corey? Do what? If you didn't like my offer, why'd you have to give me up to the sheriff? I didn't. I don't believe you. Now, I sent that girlie with an offer to pay good money. Now, if you didn't like it, why don't you just boot her? Boot her is exactly what I did. Yeah. Well, maybe. And then you sent a note to that sheriff telling him just where I was and me laying up with a bad arm. I did not. Yes, you did. All right. You say yes and I say no. Is that all you wanted? Well, that ain't all the sheriff thinks I wanted. Are you talking about that money? <laughs> I told that little girlie I'm not interested in that money. Where you're going is not going to do you much good either. Not where I'm going, no, sir. But right here. Right here, that money's going to do me more than good. Oh, if that makes you happy to think that way, you go right ahead. Oh, that makes me very happy, very happy. Because that sheriff, now he's going to think that I've told you where that money is, and him and the bank and everybody in town scratching for a dollar, they're all going to think when you leave this cell that you know where that cash been tucked away. Nobody's going to swallow that. Oh, yes, they'll swallow that. They'll swallow that. And the real pleasure, the real pleasure I'm going to get out of that money is knowing that you're going to get hounded it thumped. And maybe, maybe even strung up. And all the while, all the while you keep saying, I don't know where that money is. Mr. Oscar Remsen. He's the brother of the president of the Tombstone Bank. It was robbed. Corey? Well? Well, what? Uh, the money, Mr. Corey. I'm sure you weren't fool enough to make any uh, arrangements with that killer. That's right, I didn't. Well, he expects you to think that he told me where he hid the money, but he didn't. Man gets himself caught for bank robbery and murder, and all he's got on his mind is chewing over the times with you. Is that it? Damn it, Corey! What kind of dudes do you think we are? Yes, the kind that he knows you are. He's trying to get back at me because he thinks I turned him in. Did you? Well, you know very well I didn't. All I know is when I got here this morning, there was a hand-printed note under that door. Now, it could have been you. You knew Sutton before this. You two could have been together all along. Sure, he gets Sutton hung, and then he gets to keep all the money himself. Am I under arrest, Sheriff? Or are you just trying to pass the time of day? No. No call here, gentlemen, for threats and tempers. Mr. Corey appears, a law-abiding man, Sheriff. I'm sure he had nothing to do with that killing or stealing. But things do get lost sometime, Mr. Corey. And they get found by innocent people. Now, my uh, brother's bank uh, might be willing to pay 10% on that money if some good citizen should happen across it. 
Plain cash, no questions asked. Well, thank you. Now keep that in mind. Is that all? For now. Meanwhile, you don't leave town till I say so. You understand? I got a job to go after north of here. You let it wait. You stay put or I'll have a fugitive warrant following you, so help me. Sheriff, don't let him leave. You'll cut and run first chance. He's a thief. Mr. Renson, you sure do change sides awful fast. Now I better get out of here before you decide that I helped start the Civil War. Hello again. Hey, slow down now. Didn't anyone ever tell you that a gentleman has longer legs than a lady's? Polly. I only ask you this because it doesn't make any sense at all. But nothing else does around here either. Did you give that note to the sheriff about Sutton? Hmm. I really had no choice, you know. No, I don't know. Suppose you explain to me in your own curly brain little words. You don't mind, do you? Well, there it was, just helpless with all that money. He wouldn't tell me where it was, and you weren't interested, so... So? Well, I figured if he were caught now, then uh, then he might ask me to use the money to get him a good lawyer. Bribe somebody, you know. The last thing I imagine that he'd send for you instead of me. <laughs> I'd like to pay you back for that little favor, darling. Oh, what's the difference? Money's no good unless the company's right, is it? I hear you're Virginia born. That's right. I never heard of a Virginia gentleman who didn't appreciate good horses, good whiskey, and good women. And I'm real good, Mr. Corey. You appreciate all of that, man. But the fact is, Sutton didn't tell me where he hid the money. Darling, I could put up with a man who calls me nasty names, even hits me. But one thing I truly don't favor is a liar. Good. Hate me for a while. Well, look at that. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Corey. Just thought you dropped a hundred dollar bill. Well, just for your trouble, you can keep it. Now, look, the whole town's heard about you and that money. A man in your position ought to be a bit careful which way his back is turned. What do you want? One job, you might say. You sign us on for a little of that money, and we'll make sure that nothing or nobody bothers you for a lot of it. Get out of my way. Look, mister. All right, let's see you prove your worth. Go on, protect yourselves. And if you're still alive, we'll talk about protecting me. Throw down or get. Beautiful morning. What can I do for you, my friend? Uh, all I want is a little saddle oil. Saddle oil? Yes, sir. We have the finest. We ain't met regular, Mr. Corey, but I'm Herb Bosley. Uh, Herb's good enough. I do. Be staying in town for a while? I don't know. How much for this? Now, on the house. Well, let's say for getting acquainted. Uh, I don't know. How'd you know my name? Well, I'm a businessman. And a good businessman knows where the money is, right? Well, right or wrong, thanks. Yeah, just a minute, Corey. A smart young fellow like you could make a fortune with the right kind of help around here. How? Freight. Yes, sir, freight. The men who haul my goods in from St. Joe and Santa Fe, they turn a bigger profit than I do. If I just had the money to buy my own wagon. Oh, no. Look, Mr. Uh, Herb. Just call me Herb. Well, Herb, I don't know anything about freight. And you don't have to know. 
You just pay for those wagons and sit back and count the money. I can't afford wagons. <laughs> yeah, I ain't the sheriff's son. Oh, Herb Bosley. See no evil, say no evil. Know what I mean? Yeah, I think I do. Let's just say I'm not interested. Couldn't have had a better offer. You ain't been out of the sheriff's office more than five minutes. Thanks for the oil. <laughs> That'll be 15 cents. What are you doing? We figured on riding out this morning. Yeah, I know. The sheriff wants me to stay around until this is cleared up. That bank money something stole? Yeah. Well, what are you looking at? Well, I guess you ain't gonna say nothing about it. But I can count. Any part of that $14,000 is the sight bone money than we got right now. Do you hear me tell that sheriff that I don't know beans about that money? Yeah, I heard you. But you didn't believe me. He knew something before this. He gets caught first thing you know, he calls for you. I never expected that from you. Like I said, I can count. Uh, I guess I don't have to ask which one of you is Earl Corey. Jenner's my name, Carl Jenner. We alone here? Why? Well, I live in this town, you don't. It's on your mind, Mr. Jenner. Stan Sutton. You might say he and I, we did a little work together, too. Takes money to make money, they say. I gave Stan the grub stake he needed to make his plans. Deal was, half that bank money is mine. It's all yours if you know where it is. Well, we both know I wouldn't be here if I knew. But I see it, that Stan lost his share by making a mistake. Now, I take it as fair if you boys split his half between you. Anybody could walk in here with a story like that and want to share. Why should we believe you? That's a good point. That makes sense, fella. Now, my ranch is just outside town. I got papers there and stands writing, showing how he figured to take that bank. And a note he wanted to give me last night instead of... Last night? He the one that put that bullet in his arm? Oh, I can shoot better than that. But he didn't have the money with him. Mister, you going around shooting your partners, you ain't advertising yourself too good to us. <laughs> you boys ought to realize, I ain't asking you yes or no. I'm telling you. Now, hold on. I come alone, but that don't mean I ain't got friends. And friends means more partners. But if it comes down to that, I'll take it over nothing, you understand? Get out of here. You got sense to make up for his temper, boy. Is that the way you want it? Mister, I don't want no part of you. All right. But next time we meet, you might change your mind. Where are you going? Going to find me a job. I don't know about you no more, but I got to get me some money to live on. Yeah, I could use some myself. It's a good idea. You go up to Prescott, see if you can find some wanted posters. I'll be along in a day or two. Don't tell me that. Don't ask me to wait when you got something else going for you here. I could wait clear into my grave. Well, you do whatever you damn well please. I want to see Stan Sutton. You ain't very polite, are you? Well, next time I'll send in my card on a tree. Just a minute, I'll take your hardware. Sutton. Oh, hello, Earl. Well, I, uh, I thought you'd be gone but now. All right, you had your little game. Everybody and his cousin thinks you told me where you hid that $14,000. Now, I want you to tell him the truth. I don't get you, Earl. You mean, uh, you mean you want me to tell him where the money's hid? 
I said the truth, damn it! Now, slow down. Just what do you want me to say? I want you to tell him I don't know anything about that money that you stole. All right. Now, Sheriff, he don't know nothing about that money I stole. All right, Earl, did I say it right? Yeah. You did just fine. I want to tell you something, Sutton. Don't you ever get out of this cell. Because if you miss facing that rope, you're going to have to face me. Let's have a little talk about that money. I don't know nothing about no money. Your white partner sent you after that money because the sheriff's watching him. And don't you tell us any different. I'm telling you different. Now, look, boy, we ain't going to hang you right off, you understand? First, we're going to talk some more. OK, Blackie, you showed your stuff. But now you're just being stupid. All you're gonna do is die and leave all that money to your white friend. Any better than us? I don't think he's listening. Get his attention. Now, unless you boys want to see how well my daddy taught me to shoot, you all throw your guns down nicely now. Aw, oh, Polly, this ain't no affair of yours. Y you want that other shot in your handsome face, Bud Hawkins? You cut that boy free. Now leave your guns and take your horses, gentlemen. Polly, you're gonna be sorry. You're making me sorry. I haven't peppered your hide till now. Get! Get, you trash! They'll sneak back. No, no. They're not such men when they don't have their guns. Now, you just sit, you hear? I had to hide my horse behind that ridge so they wouldn't see me coming up. What are you doing here? Same thing they were, following you. For the money? Well, you're just as suspecting as your partner. But you're right. You think I'd take you for help me? I think that'd be very nice. What makes you think I would if I could? Shush. 
Let me clean your cuts for the faster. Actually, this reminds me of before the war. When I was a little girl, my mama used to take me along to treat one of our darkies for a sickness. And mama was a fine, gentle lady. I think the darkies loved him near as much as we did. He ain't nobody's darky. Not anymore. Oh, shoot, don't you think I know that? Or didn't I see the war destroy my home and family? Same as it did yours, I expect. Except in our favor, the dead way. You favored losing folks you loved? And the place you knew? As a choice, yes. Mostly I did. I still do. Well, you're a grown man, I can see that. But nights after the war, I used to cry alone in bed at night, wondering what happened to my old mammy Bess, who raised me from a well. An old black woman can't put on a gun and fight for $14,000 like you. No. Nope. If my old mammy's still alive, she's more a slave now than she ever was before. You go poking around for that money, Pa. I ain't got it. I don't know where it is. And it's a plain truth. But if you don't know anything about that money, you're more a fool than you sound. Shoot. That friend of yours is playing possum. And some friend <laughs> wanting it all for himself. Oh, I don't say he should share it with me. But he knows you. I mean, you know, and he's just sitting there. Well, he's just sitting there like a duck, ready to be shot at. Well, that is a greedy man, and nobody's friend. You mind all that? Well, it's just the money for me. But it's more than that between you and him, isn't it? Say, so let it be. you? As followed. Could have been Jenna's man. And you? I was jumped by a couple of drifters. Burns me is that I think the sheriff knew about it and didn't do anything. He said I could expect more of the same if I didn't tell him where that money was. Well, I don't want any more of it unless I know why. You know as much as I do. And what that Polly girl says, she made sense while she was talking about it. Polly, where'd you see her? I was looking for her. She came in with me. With you? How come? She helped me. And I thank her for it. You taking her side against me now? She ain't as bad as you think. Bad? Oh, I should say not. When a southern white bell has you eaten out of her hand, she's not only not bad, she's darn good. It ain't that way. Oh, those southern plantation missies. They had people like you eating right out of their hands, and it seems like they still can. Where are you going? I want to see that little peach blossom of yours. Seems the only way I'm going to get loose of this is to find out where that money is myself. I'd truly like to help you out, and I like the fact that you need help. I suppose you just tell me what's on your mind, darling. Well, Tombstone is no longer than two days' ride from here. Uh -huh. But Sutton was missing a week before he was caught. Now, we find out where he was in the meantime, we'd know where that money is. Aren't you the clever one? Now, what did he tell you before he came to me? I declare. You don't know where it is. I asked you a question. Well, so you did answer. I even have an answer for you. But I don't see any advantage in telling you. I could make you tell. No, you couldn't, Angel. Honest, you couldn't. When my financial situation improves, I may hire some very big man to teach you manners, darling. Eh? 
Oh, I think she could, but she wouldn't. I know one person knows where that money is for sure. You mean Sutton? Yep. A shame him being cooped up on a pretty night like this year. You know, you're right. We gotta help that man. No doubt about it. We gotta help him break out of jail. And I'll bet he'll head straight for the money. Well, that's right behind him. How are we gonna do this? Well, that sheriff seems like a nice fellow. Maybe we can get him to help us. in his room. He's afraid to come out unless you're right next to him. That's the truth. All right, come on with me. Why'd you assume where's you? Come on, get out there. Well, you don't understand, Chef. I'm scared. I don't want to be out in the street either. They don't whip me once today. Please, you know what you're doing. Hey, what here. are you doing? Get your hands off me. All right, you can wait, but wait here outside. <laughs> used to. Shoot, he ain't told me nothing about what you told him. Ain't no other way a black man gonna get this kind of money in one lifetime. All right, now open it up. Half the money? Yeah, yeah, half the money. Come on. Come on, hold that back here. He's gone. You sure? If this works, he thinks he's on his own. What about the sheriff? We could be in China by the time he wakes up.
How'd you figure to come here? From, uh, from what you said about having the town to yourself. Then I remember this old mining town halfway down from Tombstone. If you didn't find what you come for. Oh, I've been scratching and poking since dawn. I fair ruined my nails. Look at my hair. Oh, oh, darling, I was gonna use some of the money. I mean, most of the money. For you to get a good lawyer, make things easier, you know. Sure you was, girly. I'll bet. Stan, I am truly glad you're here. A woman shouldn't be in this part of the country alone. Now that you're free, I figure we you can just... You can stop have... figuring we, girly. With all that money, I can buy one like you every day of the week. Now, you can ride out of here now or later to suit yourself. Sam! Sam, there'll be posters out on you for sure. Now, you'll need somebody to get your vittles, things like that. Sigh. You can buy a woman's stamp. But not a feelings. I always admire the man that went his own way. Drop it. Oh, you darling, I knew I could depend on you. You. But you were shot, I see. You made it up to thrill me. That's right. And since you came here, we know the money's here. Now get it. Come on, Sutton, know when you're beat. As far as the law is concerned, they can catch up with you another time. It ain't our fair. You know you can't reason with trash. A good horse whipping is all he'll understand. <laughs> He was a trigger pull away from getting shot. Well, did you have to kill him? You could have just winged him. Next time I run over there and chalk me a nice circle before I shoot. <laughs> some move, then followed you. We even dusted your trail. So the sheriff won't be following us. Now, you got no hope. Anybody coming to help you? You hear me? Come out of there and we can talk. We'll come out of here when we see you with your hands empty. Keep up that cover fire until one of them is right in our lap. Where'd one of them three bushwhack me on the trail yesterday? Three plus Jenna, that makes four altogether. You think you can hold it down here for a while? Well, I don't know. Wouldn't want to kill nobody, get you mad at me.
There's three of them now. We just crossed over to the water and drove. You know something? I think we ought to give up. What? It's not us you want, you want the money! Right? All right, you're gonna get it! No, no, this money's mine and I found it and you're not gonna take it from me. Come on, give you me You cannot that. take it from me! Come on, will it's you? It's mine! Ow! Will you help me with her? Oh. Ow! Come on, here, hold her on. What you up to? No! Coming for that money under your guns. You throw them out, we'll pick up that money and ride. The scatter gun, too. Fifty? Forty, sixty. Just pick it all up, pretty Polly, and put it in my saddlebag. I said all of it. Your figure doesn't need improving. Well, that's very gracious of you, Earl. You do have a way with you when you want to. Your servant, ma'am. It's all tied up nice and pretty, ready to ride. Good. $15,000. That show is a lot of money. I just think the same thing. It sure do sparkle. Man can hardly look at it. I'm ashamed of you, gentlemen. I'm shocked and ashamed. I don't know what you're talking about. Me neither. We're not so far from the border, we can't afford to stop for a day or two. I know a little cantina down there. Ain't likely to find no business in there. That 10% the bank paid us for bringing that money back ain't gonna last forever. Not are we. Might as well have a little fun in the meanwhile. Like we just had. No, I ain't healed yet. You had worse chasing Bounty and got paid a lot less for it, too. Yeah, do me a favor. Don't be running into any more of your bank robber friends here. I told you, Sutton never was. What a marvelous coincidence. I doubt both parts of that. When that chef decided that six hours in jail was enough to straighten you out? Oh, that. Well, when I explained to Ralph, to who? Ralph. That's the sheriff's first name. When I told him how Stan threatened me if I didn't help him, and how being a woman all alone, who else was I to turn to? If I'd known how sweet Ralph was. <laughs> Is that the same sheriff we met? Just call him Sweet Ralph. Oh, really? I was hoping I'd ride with you a spell on my way to California. But if you're gonna keep on saying mean things, we're never gonna have any fun. Just a second. Jamal, would you hold on to this for me? And this? Now, pretty Polly, I just might be willing to chance your company. I declare, you're a miserable caution. Just miserable. 